This is going to be a quick demonstration of the muscles that we can see here in the anterior aspect of the thigh. Though not all of them are anatomically in the anterior aspect, but we will show all the muscles. The muscle that we can see here in the anterior compartment is this muscle here. This is the rectus femoris, which takes origin by two heads, a direct head from the anterior inferior iliac spine and a reflected head from just above the acetabulum. And it's called rectus because it's running straight, femoris because it runs in front of the femur and it merges with the quadriceps tendon. The next muscle that we see here is this muscle on the lateral aspect. It takes origin from the linea aspera and comes medially. This is the vastus lateralis, the largest of the quadriceps muscle. Deep to the rectus femoris, we see this tendinous and fleshy portion here. This is the vastus intermedius, which takes origin from the anterior surface of the femur, where my finger is going. And finally, medially, we have this muscle here. This is the vastus medialis, which also takes origin from the linea aspera and comes medially. So these four muscles, rectus femoris, vastus lateralis, vastus intermedius, and vastus medialis, they are part of the quadriceps, which fuses at the quadriceps tendon, which gets inserted onto the base of the patella. So, and this is the most powerful extensor of the knee. It is three times as powerful as the antagonistic muscle, that is the hamstrings, which is the flexor of the knee. The rectus femoris, because it's coming from above the hip joint, it also has action of flexing the hip. So therefore, this is also referred to as the kicking muscle. Because this is the position that footballers use when they flex the hip and they flex the knee and they vigorously straighten the knee to kick the ball, they use the rectus femoris. Injury to the rectus femoris will compromise the function of the quadriceps by 17%. So these are the quadriceps muscles. This is the sartorius, Taylor's muscle. The other anterior muscle is this one here in the floor of the femoral triangle, this muscle. This is the pectineus. It takes origin from the pectin pubis and it gets inserted onto the pectineal line of the femur. This has got flexion of the hip as well as adduction of the hip. The pectineus is a dual muscle, so therefore it is supplied by femoral nerve. It is also supplied by an operator nerve on the medial side. The sartorius and the quadriceps are all supplied by branches of femoral nerve. Now I will show you some of the muscles, though this is an anterior dissection, but we can see some muscles of the medial compartment, the adductor compartment. This muscle that we see here, this is the adductor longus. It takes origin from the body of the pubis and it gets inserted onto the middle one third of the linea aspera and we can see that. This forms the medial boundary of the femoral triangle. In riders, long term riders, there can be heterotopic bone formation here and that is known as rider's bone. Just medial to that, we have this muscle here. This is the adductor brevis, which also takes origin from the superior ramus of the pubis and gets inserted into the upper portion of the linea aspera. When I reflect this, then I can see a muscle deep inside. We can see only a little bit of that muscle here and further deep inside. This is the adductor magnus. The adductor magnus takes origin from the ischiopubic ramus and it gets inserted onto a large part of the linea aspera. That is the adductor component. The adductor magnus also has got another deeper component which we cannot see in this view. That is known as the hamstring component which takes origin from the ischial tuberosity and gets attached to the adductor tubercle. The adductor magnus gets supply from the operator nerve which is the adductor component and the hamstring component gets no supply from the tibial division of the sciatic nerve. Then we have this muscle here which I have lifted up here and we can see this muscle here. This is the gracilis. The tendon is very thin and graceful and this tendon of the gracilis, the tendon of the sartorius and a muscle on the back of the thigh called the semitendinosus, these three together get inserted onto the upper end of the tibia in an insertion called the pes anserinus or the goose foot which looks like this. This is a still shot from another dissection showing the author's hand holding up the tendons of the pes anserinus. This gracilis muscle does not have much of an adductor function. However, it is used in surgical practice for repairing an incontinent anal sphincter. Now let me show you the neurovascular structure coming out from the medial compartment. And we, for that we have retracted the adductor longus and we have lifted up the adductor brevis to show this structure here. This is the obturator nerve and the obturator artery. This is the obturator nerve and the obturator artery. And if you look here, my finger has come through the obturator foramen. 
So the operative nerve and the operator artery comes from the pelvis through the operator foramen. And for better clarity, I'm going to put my instrument here to show it is coming here. So this is the operator foramen, and through that, they come to the thigh. It runs initially between the adductor magnus and the adductor brevis, and then it runs between the adductor longus and the adductor magnus. And we can see here the rest of the operator nerve and the operator artery, and they are the ones which supply the muscles of the medial compartment. The operator nerve also gives a branch to the pectineus muscle. The pectineus is a dual muscle. The operator nerve also supplies a little bit of the skin of the middle one third of the medial side of the thigh. This is going to be a demonstration of the rectal canal, its boundaries and its contents. The rectal canal is 15 centimeters long. It starts from the apex of the femoral triangle and ends at the erector hiatus, which enters into the popliteal fossa. This erector canal is roughly triangular canal in cross section. Diagrammatic representation to show you the erector canal in a cross section. Antromedially, it is bounded by the sartorius, and we can see the sartorius. We have repositioned the sartorius in its normal anatomical location. And just under that, under the sartorius, there was a thin layer of fascia, which is referred to as a subsartorial fascia. We have removed that. This is the anteromedial boundary. Then we have the anterolateral boundary, where my finger is tracing. And for that, I will retract the sartorius to show the anterolateral boundary. The anterolateral boundary is this muscle here. This is the vastus medialis and posteriorly we have this muscle here this is the adductor longus so if i were to again put it back the place where the sartorius overlaps the adductor longus that is where the adductor canal begins so it begins at the apex of the femoral triangle which is here this adductor canal gives passage to the following structures going from anterior to posterior the first content, anterior most content, is this one here, which we have picked up. This is the longest cutaneous branch of the femoral nerve. This is the femoral nerve, which I have lifted up here. And we can see a branch coming from here all the way. This is the saphenous nerve. The saphenous nerve, it runs through the adductor canal and then it pierces through and it accompanies the long saphenous vein and it supplies the skin of the medial side of the leg and the foot along with this long saphenous vein. The next structure in the adductor canal is this artery here. This is the femoral artery and we have picked up the femoral artery here and just behind that is this structure here this is the femoral vein so going from anterior to posterior we have the saphenous nerve the femoral artery femoral vein the next structure that we can see is the which i have picked up here but this does not go outside the lateral canal this is also a branch from the femoral nerve and it goes and it supplies the vastus medialis and we can see that so this is the contents of the adductor canal. The adductor canal gives passage to the structures from the femoral triangle to the rest of the thigh and beyond. So this is the surgically and a clinically important landmark called the adductor canal. Thank you very much for watching. Dr. Sanjay Sanyan signing out. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. David O is the camera person. Have a nice day.